Stay away from secular music. A lot of this music is actually using frequencies to cause you harm. As we know, Satan was Lucifer in heaven, and he was in charge of music. We have to understand that our spiritual enemy knows way more about music than we do. Wait, Lucifer was in charge of music in heaven? What? I've never heard that. How did he know that? Is that in the Bible? I don't remember anything about it. This is Big Nick, if you're unfamiliar. He is a TikTok influencer, probably on the decline. I think he's got 2.3 million subbies on TikTok, which is not nothing. That's that's extremely influential. But he doesn't release very often, first of all. And second, he had a star role in this QAnon song that came out October 6, 2023, with like a bunch of other QAnoners. This is starting out with Forgiato Blow. From the shores of California all the way down to the keys. Only he will bring us closer. This is Michael Flynn. When we fall to our knees. Now's Big Nick. And he'll lift us from the ground so that everyone can see that we never lost our freedom. It's in here. Okay, this guy does not know to, how to sing. Although, for the record, he fancies himself a rapper as well as the others do. Anyways, he had a star role in this, as well as some other people. Liz Crokin had a role in this song, too. Just listen to her little section. Those are the two people I want to talk about primarily in this video, Liz Crokin and Big Nick. And we're going to talk about their views, their ideas, their feelings on everything, and uh, how they connect to QAnon, basically. Take all our money. But you can't have our soul You can burn down our buildings And we'll still find a home Yeah, that would be Liz Crokin. I apologize for that, guys. I know it was hard to make it through. But anyway, I'll just leave it at that. So let's talk about these people. October 15th, 2021. This is Big Nick on his Tic Tac account or, or TikTok or whatever it's called. If you haven't noticed recently, the Biden... Uh, tick Flick. That's it. Tick Flick. Tic Tac, Tic Flick, whatever. If you haven't noticed recently, the Biden administration has been collapsing the American supply chain as multiple ships are left at bay, unable to transport their cargo. And also the Biden administration was collapsing the supply chain intentionally, according to this guy, because a ship got caught in the Suez Canal. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys remember that story from like years ago, a ship couldn't get out of the Suez Canal and it like jammed up everything. It was the uh, what was it called? The the evergreen or the ever given or the ever something or other i don't know that was biden's fault apparently biden did that because he wanted to make the world suffer you see because he's trying to bring about a one world government you see cargo and ultimately the goal of this is to collapse the free world of america to usher in the new world order or the satanic one world government the affirmative task we have now is to actually um a new world order i make Dude, he didn't even look. There are like 16 cuts in this video and he didn't even like splice it together correctly. It's just missing words. Look at how many cuts this has. Affirmative task we have now is that's one. The affirmative task we have now. He could have said anything after that. The affirmative task we have now is to rebuild the United States, bring back jobs and solve the covid problem. He could have said that for all we know. I have no idea what this is from, but he spliced it in with. Another segment where he says to actually um, a new where to actually um, he says is to actually um, and then he spliced it in with the word a new world order. What is anybody buying this? This is absurd. Quick interjection. I won't take long. I just wanted to tell you guys YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel. I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video. By the way, it pops up a little meme here. New World Order. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, that Satan is a god of this world. If you don't understand this, then you will never grasp the truth behind the workings of the New World Order. Oh, I was hoping he's going to explain what it is. I guess he's just going to tell you to read 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Great, that was helpful. Government. The affirmative task we have now is to actually um, a new world order. I'm making like if he's going to splice it together so much, couldn't he at least remove the word um? Honestly, the affirmative task we have now is a new world order. I'm 
making this video today to be a watchman for all of you. But I want to let the righteous men and women of God know not to be stressed out because in Psalm 37, 19, it says, even in days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But definitely stock up on supplies and food and other items you may need in case they're not available. What a fear mongering joke, honestly. This is so sad. But you know what? It gets even more sad than that. October 17th, 2021. He comes out here and he has a little bit to say about secular music. I did an absurd amount of research for this segment because I knew it was BS from the start because it's coming out of his mouth. But I wanted to understand what the deal was. What's happening here? So let's talk about it stay away from secular music. A lot of this music is actually using frequencies to cause you harm. As we know, Satan was Lucifer in heaven and he was in charge of music. We have to understand that our spirit- I, I don't know that. I have never heard that in my entire life. Did that come from the Bible? Does anybody know what he's talking about with Lucifer being like the head of music in heaven or whatever? Is that real? understand that our spiritual enemy knows way more about music than we do. The satanic Illuminati bloodline family called the Rockefeller family Oh boy, we're getting into anti-Semitic conspiracy theories now. The Jews did it. Actually carried out a study on 440 hertz frequency. This programming frequency in music was shown to cause a lot of harm in people, such as greater aggression, psychological agitation, and emotional distress. A lot okay, 440 hertz music, uh, or 440 hertz bass music. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. And um, while we talk about it, I'm actually going to get my guitar so that I can demonstrate. Give me a second. Okay, this is just a uh, this is just a cheap acoustic. I think it was like a hundred bucks or something at Walmart. So, and it, I, actually, it was free for me because it came with my wife. So, came free with the marriage. <laughs> All right, check it out. This is the musical scale on a piano. You can see here it starts at C, right? And we've got a little black key that's a C sharp. It's a half step up from C. And then we've got a full step up, which is D. So we got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it keeps repeating. There is no E sharp. There's no half step between E and F. It's just E and then F. And there's no half step between B and C either. It's just B to C. When you pluck a string, it's vibrating at a certain frequency, right? It's vibrating at a certain pulse, basically, back and forth, back and forth, right? Now, watch closely. I'll, I'm going to zoom in on this later. You can see the string vibrating, right? And you can see this one vibrating, right? Oh, my God, it's so out of tune, it's terrible. The satanic Illuminati bloodline family called the Rockefeller family actually carried out a study on 440 hertz frequency. What he means when he says that is the A note above middle C. We'll say this is middle C right here on screen. This A note vibrates at 440 vibrations per second, basically 440 hertz. It doesn't scale up exactly with every step. So it's not like you have like 20 hertz per step. So A is 440, B is 460, C is uh, 480. It's not like that. It doubles. It's, it's at an exponential height, right? And that's why when you play the guitar, you can do something called harmonics, where I can pluck the string anywhere with my fingers on the strings and mute it it's completely muted right but if i go about one fourth of the way down the string right over the 12th fret i get a harmonic because the the string is vibrating in segments it's vibrating in you know half segments fourth segments eighth segments 12th segments and if i put my finger exactly where it's vibrating then it creates this tone, this interesting sound, right? Versus not putting it on a harmonic, right? But you can find the harmonic. There are a number of them. There's one above 12. And then there's one right here, right? Anyways, there are also harmonics down by where you pluck the strings. There are ways to uh, manipulate those 
those locations and create something called pinch harmonics. That's neither here nor there. Okay, so what is he talking about when he says 440 hertz? The satanic Illuminati bloodline family called the Rockefeller family actually carried out a study on 440 hertz frequency. The thing that makes a sound in the first place is the string vibrating at a certain frequency, vibrating a certain number of times per second. 440 hertz is the standard for music in, I think, the entire world. At one point in time, the standard was 430 hertz, 426 hertz. I mean, it's changed throughout the years. But if it's off by a certain number of hertz, what that means is that it's just like a half step down. Like instead of playing a song like you normally hear it, like Nothing Else Matters by Metallica, it's one half step below that. All of the notes are still in tune with each other. Everything still sounds pretty normal because it's all in line still. It's just tuned down just a little bit to be a little bit lower. Instead of being way up here like this, it's just about right here like this, you know? I mean, I, I'm just trying to uh, give you a, a an auditory example of, of what he's talking about here. So... We didn't actually know what hertz were until the 1920s, I think. We didn't have a word for hertz until then. Un until that point, it was called cycles per second. And we didn't really have a good way of measuring it either. So Big Nick's claim is that long and long ago, our ancestors played at 420 hertz, which is the music of the gods. That's simply untrue. We have the tuning forks of people like, um, I think, Mozart and Beethoven. We have tuning forks from a long time ago. And those tuning forks, usually I think they, they tune middle C for you, and then you can tune the rest based on that. Or maybe, maybe they tune A. Anyways, the tuning fork was tuned to different values for different people. 426 hertz for one, 432 for another, 439. I mean, they were all different values because we didn't have an extremely precise way of measuring hertz the way that we do today. That's what 440 hertz means. It is the standard across the world. The A above middle C will always vibrate at exactly 440 hertz. We have agreed that every instrument that's produced from now to time immemorial will always have A tuned to that standard. It's not some satanic thing. It's just the tuning standard. And it was never 420 hertz like he's about to claim. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, this supposed study done by the Rockefellers, completely made up. This is just complete garbage, all of it. There was no greater aggression, psychological agi uh, I'm sorry, psychosocial agitation, whatever that means, emotional distress. No, it's completely made up, all of it. Such as greater aggression, psychological agitation. It says psychosocial agitation. And emotional distress. A lot of big artists in the music industry are actually using this frequency to cause these problems in your life. Check out a very popular rapper named XXXTentacion talking about the same exact thing. That is a wild f name. This is, appears to actually be XXXTentacion, and he is a real guy. Didn't, uh, didn't XXXTentacion die recently? I think he did, right? This frequency program. Music is frequency. What fre frequency? Dude, I don't even know if this is spliced together or what, because it's so jumpy. Uh, we saw Big Nick splice together like six segments of Joe Biden. Like they split up every single word. It was ridiculous. So I, I, I can't trust a word out of this dude's mouth, but let's just listen and see what XXXTentacion is saying. Wild name. This frequency program. Music is frequency. What well, fre frequency are you being fed? If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind. It cleans no, you can't. Target certain parts of the mind? No! Your brain operates at about one hertz, I believe. Your heart is one to one and a half hertz. I, don't, I looked this up recently. I don't remember exactly what the numbers are, but it's just completely made up. All of it. Every last bit of this is made up. There's no study that proves any of this. It's just a musical standard that we use. That's it. Before that, we didn't really have a musical standard that was spread worldwide. It was just whatever. 
You know, um, I'm going to tune my tuning fork to, or I'm going to have a tuning fork that tunes to about 426 hertz. And this guy over here has one that's at uh, three, uh, 430 something. As long as the entire orchestra is using the same tuning fork to tune their instruments, it's not a big deal. You can't really tell the difference. But everybody wanted everything exact, which I completely agree with. Ecclesiastes 7, 5 in the Bible clearly states it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Stay away from secular music because you don't know the deep spiritual warfare that it may be causing in your life. It's not causing any deep spiritual warfare. This dude lives in a fantasy land. This is insane. If you think that's insane, just wait. You remember the song I played earlier? That freedom song or whatever? You can burn down our buildings and we'll still find a home. That's Liz Crokin right there. I want to talk about her next. We hit Big Nick and his absolute psychosis. That's, that, that's just scratching the surface of Big Nick, but let's talk about Liz Crokin. I said earlier that that song was written by and performed by QAnoners, right? Let's talk about this QAnoner. Mid-August 2022, she comes out here and she has a hypothesis about COVID. The White Hats tainted the elite's adrenochrome supply with the coronavirus, and that's why so many members of the elite's are getting the coronavirus if it okay indeed they do have their coronavirus if indeed they have so she doesn't even know that they have coronavirus does she even believe that COVID is real at this point there's a lot to unpack here if you're unfamiliar with QAnon just a quick 15 second overview it's a cult that was created by a guy named Q he calls himself Q clearance patriot he's anonymous we've come to find that it started out as Paul Ferber I'm gonna pop up a picture here and it eventually, when moved over to 8chan, away from 4chan, became Ron Watkins with the assistance of his dad, Jim Watkins. Pictures over here. My name is Ron Watkins, and I am not a politician. I am an entrepreneur, and I am a computer scientist. We have to send a fighter, and I am your fighter. I am fighting for you. If you send me to D.C., you will know that I will be fighting against this evil, and I will make sure that... We drive them back, and I will make sure that your rights are, are kept. They posted a whole bunch of stuff and created a de facto cult. And that cult started going down this bizarre rabbit hole about elites taking adrenochrome from children. Adrenochrome is an actual substance that exists. The claim is that you have to harvest adrenochrome from living victims. So you have to get adrenaline pumping through their body and scare them a whole bunch. And when the adrenaline is pumping through their body, you drink their blood, which contains oxygenated adrenaline, also known as adrenochrome. Now, adrenochrome is real. It is really oxygenated adrenaline, but it's completely useless. It doesn't do anything for anybody. Adrenochrome, when taken drank eaten whatever just gives a mild headache if you really want to buzz you can just go get adrenaline or, or help jump out of a plane do skydiving if you want some crazy feeling all you got to do is get that adrenaline pumping in your own system you don't need to drink the blood of innocence which doesn't do anything for you anyways but QAnon is dead set on the belief that Hillary Clinton specifically and Huma Abedin and some other people, which is a Hillary Clinton aide, are doing this. They're scaring children by like hurting them and doing some crazy stuff to them. And then they're drinking their blood while they're alive and then they're killing them, basically. That's the claim. Just to add a little context, white hats are, in QAnon speak, members of the military who are working with QAnon, the, the guy, like Q Clearance Patriot, the dude that's posting all this stuff, they're working with him to further the goals of QAnon and bring about this big storm where all the bad guys are arrested and blah, 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 blah. So the White Hats tainted the adrenochrome supply, I guess, of the elite. I'm not sure what she's talking about. Just absurd. White Hats are just the good guys. It's taken from hacking terms. White Hat is a hacker that's working to find vulnerabilities so that they can fortify a company's networks or, or systems or whatever. Black Hat hackers are people who are hacking to 
gain vulnerable information or gain valuable information and sell it to make a profit or something like that. Good guy versus bad guy. So uh, apparently elites can have a supply of adrenochrome. I thought they had to take it from a living victim. This is news to me. So they have a supply of it, apparently, and it's been tainted with coronavirus. All right, go on. Let her cook. Let her cook. The elites are getting the coronavirus, if indeed they do have their coronavirus. Um, so adrenochrome is a drug that the elites love. No, it isn't. It's not even real, okay? It's like, think of it this way. Think of adrenaline as weed being the drug, and the ashes after burning that weed are adrenochrome. That's the best comparison I can give you. It's spent adrenaline that's already been used up and rendered inert by bonding with oxygen molecules. That the elites love. It comes from children. The drug is extracted from the pituitary gland. Adrenal gland. Of tortured children. Why children? Why did they pick children? Can't human or can't adult humans produce this? Hell, can't animals produce adrenaline? Am I missing something? It's a testament to how truly sick pe these people are in their heads to come up with a demented conspiracy theory like this, honestly. You know, for good measure, let me just tell you the conspiracy theory for educational purposes if you're unfamiliar. I don't think I've ever actually said the entire conspiracy theory on, on my channel before. The claim is that Anthony Weiner was a congressman at one point. He had a problem with sending duck pictures, you know, pictures of waterfowl. He was sending them around to random women. I don't know why he liked showing people pictures of geese and ducks and whatnot, if you catch my drift, but that's just his thing, so whatever. Anyways, he was sending those pictures around and just to random people that he met, you know, hey, let me get your phone number. And then he snap a picture and send it over to them of his duck at his house. One time he sent some of those pictures of waterfowl to some underage girls. I think they were 16, 17, maybe. I don't remember how old, but that's unacceptable, right? Absolutely unacceptable. And to make matters worse, at one point, he even sent one of these pictures of waterfowl with the duck in frame and his own child in the bed next to him in frame. Seriously, he's an absolutely terrible person. I think he's in jail now. I'm not sure. He deserves to be if he's not. He's a Democrat for the record. So anyways, um, he was sending these pictures of waterfowl around to all these people and uh, they went to arrest him. This is all real so far. They show up at his house. The, the police do. And they arrest him and they find his laptop. Now is the QAnon part. This is, it, it's fake from this point forward. QAnon believes that they found Anthony Weiner's laptop. Anthony Weiner's wife was Huma Abedin, Hillary Clinton's aide. So they found Anthony Weiner's laptop. Wild last name for the crime he committed, right? What a crazy coincidence. Anyway, it's like the number of dentists that are named Dennis. It's just like disproportionate. So I get, I don't know. Maybe he was predestined to do what he did because of his last name. Anyways, uh, so on the laptop, allegedly, according to QAnon, they found a video of Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin tying a girl, 12 years old, I assume, 12 years old, to a chair and cutting her face off and Hillary Clinton putting her face on like Silence of the Lambs style, right? And laughing and all that stuff to freak the girl out and get her adrenaline pumping, at which point they put her blood into a goblet because now it's got adrenochrome in it, right? And then they drank the blood because it had the adrenochrome, and that's the drug that the elites crave, apparently. Like, we all thought it was Brondo. Apparently, it's adrenochrome. It's what plants crave, too, as it turns out. Anyways, that's the story. That is the QAnon conspiracy about Hillary Clinton and Anthony Weiner and adrenochrome. That's where it all originated. And it exploded from there. Matter of fact, this woman right here, Liz Crokin, was one of the first, or one of the early adopters, we'll put it that way. She's one of the early adopters of QAnon. So right after COVID starts, she claims the adrenochrome supply of the elites was tainted by COVID, apparently. Wild stuff, dude. Don't forget, this is very relevant here, 
adrenochrome must be harvested from a living victim in their heads. I mean, it's not true. You can buy adrenochrome on eBay, I think. People, scientists use it all the time for various different studies. It's not hard to get. But I get, in their heads, it has to be fresh. So that's why they have all these child trafficking victims because they, ju- you know, they stick a Capri Sun straw in their arm and, and sip away, I guess, or something. It's the elites love. It comes f- from children. The drug is extracted from the pituitary gland of... It's adrenochrome. Why would she go with pituitary gland? Adrenaline, adrenochrome. Does he? Does she even know what adrenochrome is? Probably not, right? Tortured children. It's sold on the black market. It's the drug of the elites. It's their no to all of this. Favorite drug. It is beyond evil. It's demonic. It is so sick. So there is a theory that no, no, there isn't a theory. The, I, I assume she's going to put forward a hypothesis for us, right? Okay, what's your hypothesis, Liz? Theory that the White Hats tainted their adrenochrome supply with the coronavirus. Why? It gives them a better high or something? The elites like uh, drinking adrenochrome mixed with uh, coronavirus or something? Jesus Christ, dude. This is insane. You think that's insane? Oh, that's nothing, baby. She's got more. Mid-August 2022. She comes out here and says even more crazy stuff. Remember, this all relates back to that QAnon song that was written by like Forgiato Blow, Michael Flynn of all people, Jeremy Levy, and and everybody else. They all produced this song, Big Nick and everything. These are the people they had in this song. The Illuminati, the elites, they use the Wizard of Oz to mind control child slaves. They... They use the Wizard of Oz to mind control child slaves. How gullible can you get? Seriously. She claims to be an investigative journalist. How did she fall down this rabbit hole? This is insane. Use, they use different media. Alice in Wonderland's another one. They use different Disney movies and certain films to program children. And part of the programming is having them watch these films and they also abuse them uh to and and they and they physically abuse them because the abuse splits their personality and creates different personalities okay i suppose in some cases i've heard of certain types of abuse causing dramatic trauma to somebody's personality sure what does she mean when she says it splits the personality and how does the wizard of oz factor into this does the wizard of oz split people's personality what so then they are able to program them and control them and they, they virtually become mk ultra mk ultra programming oh my god dude she's going down the mk ultra rabbit hole this is ridiculous is there an end to what this woman will believe will we ever come to the end of the road where she would say wow that's just a little too far for me man i can't i'm sorry What makes this even more comical, honestly, comical and sad simultaneously, is that in 2019, leading up to a lot of this, she said this. Listen to this. We will all be vindicated. I know it. It, Very soon. All those QAnoners. Definitely within our lifetimes, but very soon, before President Trump's presidency is over. Just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies there, didn't she? Definitely before Trump's term is over. I mean, this is in 2019 when she said this. I guess she's eating those words, isn't she? QAnon's going to come along and create the storm where everybody is going to be arrested, who's a bad guy and everything else. Actually, in all seriousness, January 6th was supposed to be the storm, and it failed miserably. We are living in biblical times. We are living in a time where God is exposing all evil. And, you know, I've been calling John Podesta a pedophile for almost two years straight now. Yeah, um... Podesta, John Podesta, was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, and uh, he was the the one to kind of start Pizzagate unintentionally. So you remember when Donald Trump asked Russia to find Hillary's emails? I don't know if you guys remember that forever ago. That a person in our government, Katie, would delete or get rid of 33,000 emails. That gives me a big problem. Oh, the irony. 
after she gets a subpoena. She gets subpoenaed. And she gets rid of 33,000 emails. That could this is so funny, right? Looking back on it and all of the documents that he stole from secure bunkers. This is so funny to listen to now, right? There's a problem. Now, if Russia or China or any other country has those emails, I mean, to be honest with you, I'd love to see them. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. So um, they did. Russia did what's called a spear phishing attack on John Podesta, which is Hillary's campaign manager. Basically, he was getting spam emails sent to him personally, specifically, and sent to his phone number and everything, saying that, I don't know, you need to update your password on your Apple store or you need to update your password on google or you whatever and when you click the link in the email it takes you to a website that looks exactly like the gmail login screen in every way and maybe it even says google in the the like the little bar at the top except one of the o's has a little accent mark above it or maybe one of the o's is a zero instead and you don't even notice and you you go to log in to your account you type your name and your password in and you get in and it redirects you to the real Google or Gmail website and you, you think nothing of it. You're like, oh, that's weird. Well, I typed my password. Maybe I mistyped it and you type it in again and it lets you in. But the email you received brings you straight to the hacker's website and the hacker receives your password information when you type it in that first time. That's how podesta's emails were retrieved so what did his emails say between himself and hillary clinton and and other people he talked about getting pizza at a pizza parlor called uh comet ping pong or comet pizza and ping pong something like that and QAnon, which didn't quite exist yet this is kind of its founding moment or one of its founding moments the people who would eventually go on to become QAnon believed that Every time they said the word pizza, it was code for little boy or little girl or something. I don't know. I think it was pizza and hot dogs or something. I don't even remember what it was. How whacked out to come up with a conspiracy like this? How truly twisted do you have to be? Like, this is really, really whacked out stuff. So anyways, that's Pizzagate. That's the basis of Pizzagate. And it got so many people whipped into a blood frenzy that... A guy eventually showed up to Comet Pizza and Ping Pong with a gun and demanded to see their basement because they believed they were holding kids in the basement. They don't have a basement. Nobody was hurt, luckily. The cops showed up. They brought the, the, they brought the guy to jail. But the conspiracy theory persisted and got integrated into QAnon when it eventually showed up not long after that. So anyways, that's what she's referring to here with the Pizzagate stuff and everything. She started her career as a journalist, if you will, on Pizzagate. That's what she first reported on, if you can even call it reporting. That's called phishing, a phishing attack. But in, in John Podesta's case, it was a spear phishing attack. Spear phishing is where it's directly targeting a specific person. Phishing is just sending out a billion of them and trying to get as many email passwords as you can. He was spear fish attacked. I've been calling John Podesta a pedophile for almost two years straight now. And people have called me crazy or thought I was crazy to make those kinds of accusations. But the evidence is so undeniable. I have no problem doing it. And it the evidence is not like the evidence that he talked about getting a cheese pizza at Comet Ping Pong and cheese pizza stands for CP. Where is your head? How seriously, how whacked out do you have to be to come up with something like this? This is like about as depraved as it gets. The dude didn't do anything, okay? He's as squeaky clean as it gets, as far as anybody can tell. And you are, like, slapping the, the most grotesque labels on him and insane conspiracy theories about him. You'll notice he hasn't threatened to sue me, and many people have called him a pedophile. No one's threatened. He hasn't threatened to sue anyone. I mean, Andrew Breitbart called him a pedophile years ago before they knocked him off. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, we're going to see before they knocked him off. Does that mean she thinks that Andrew Breitbart, the founder of Breitbart News, was killed? You know, we're going to see John Podesta and his brother arrested. That, that I, I would guess that announcement, without a doubt, will be made before the end of the, this year. You know, the end of 2019. Isn't that funny? Oh God, so much irony in this video. And and, and all this stuff is going to be exposed, and what we'll, we'll all be any five minutes now, right? Vindicated, and these rings will be totally broken up. The kids will be saved, and it'll be glorious. What are you gonna? What are they gonna do when when they when they find out that they've been so brainwashed and fooled? I mean, and how humiliating! How humiliating for these people that they're gonna be mortified that they were so fooled and they were so dumb and they were so naive. She doesn't understand the irony at all, does she? She's sitting here claiming by the end of the year, at least by the end of Trump's term at the the latest, right, 2021. All of this stuff is going to be exposed. I mean, Donald Trump's the president. He must have intel on this, right? He must know all about this secret ring that exists. It never came to fruition. It never happened. And now she's describing feeling the feeling that her detractors should have. The feeling of absolute humiliation because I didn't believe Liz Crokin when she said that there was some trafficking ring out there trying to drink adrenochrome from kids like Capri Suns. It's absolutely insane. Is there like an ounce of self-awareness in there? Does she feel what she's describing now that she's been unequivocally proven wrong at every turn? Of course not. That they were so full and they were so dumb and they were so naive. And that's why we need to have compassion for these people, even though it's going to be tough because a lot of these people were really awful to us and were really mean to us and mocked us. That's because you're acting like a fucking idiot. I'm sorry. I don't like insulting people. This isn't about an insult. I really hope you come back to reality, Liz, okay? But as far as I can tell, there's no reality in sight for you. You're sitting over here doing a QAnon song. For trying to tell the truth. Yeah, she's just trying to tell the truth, guys. She's over here doing a QAnon song, okay? With a bunch of QAnoners about how they're oppressed and mistreated. Take all our money, but you can't have our soul. You can burn down our buildings, and we'll still find a home. It's just embarrassing all the way down. It's embarrassing and painful and sad. Like, how... Does she wake up every morning and look herself in the mirror? Honestly. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments. These people are just unglued from reality.